Hello, my name is Ben. I'm CEO and co-founder at Rainbird. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about explainable AI and transparency, particularly as it applies to automated decision making. We'll look at why transparency is important, how legislation is changing, and also a little bit of how technologies like Rainbird can help with some of these challenges. But first of all, I want to talk about trust, specifically trust in technology. And trust in technology can only come through understanding that technology. And when technology is black box, that understanding can be hard to come by. It's only human that we want to understand the way our technology is being used and the way it's making decisions for us. Now, history is full of examples of public mistrust in technology. Take the humble microwave, for example. When it first appeared on the market, people were suspicious and uptake was slow. It took a long time before it penetrated the market and it became a familiar part of our everyday lives as it is today. There's even a word for it, skeptophilia, the fear of microwaves. Unfamiliarity breeds mistrust. Now, some recent research by the Royal Society of the Arts and YouGov found that 83% of the British public don't understand and are unfamiliar with the use of automated decision making in the legal justice system. Now, that's not all that surprising. This is not technology that was widely publicised or that people were very familiar with. But what is surprising is that despite this self-professed lack of familiarity with that technology, 60% of people said they would oppose its use. We don't trust technology we don't understand. Even if that technology is proven to be safe and successful, if we don't understand it, we're unhappy with the thought of its use. So it's not surprising that there's anxiety around artificial intelligence. But as with clinical psychology, understanding and confronting that anxiety is the way to overcome it. And the problem is that statistical techniques such as neural networks, well, they're difficult to trust in their current form. Take healthcare, for example. We can train neural networks or other black box systems on the vast amounts of clinical data we have to do amazing things like predict the likelihood that a patient might suffer from heart disease at some point in the future. Unfortunately though, those predictions are difficult to trust without understanding of why those predictions are being made, even if we can show that it's likely to produce convincingly successful and accurate results trust in those decisions is hard to come by. Clinicians want to understand the models and the reasons behind those predictions so they can better serve their patients. Patients want to understand those models so that they have concrete reasons for the diagnosis that's being made. Without understanding, these models are difficult to trust. So what does this mean for the application of these technologies in the real world? Well. When automated decision-making is being used in a non-critical field, such as advertising or recommending you a movie on Netflix, when those decisions don't have critical outcomes, well, the need for transparency is somewhat tempered. Poor decision-making in those fields doesn't really have much consequence, so we don't really mind how those decisions are made. Most people are not concerned with understanding the modelling that goes behind recommending the next great movie to watch on Netflix. However, this technology is increasingly finding its way into fields where the outcome is critical or possibly even has fatal consequences. And when those consequences are critical, trust in technology is also critical. And when that trust is lacking due to lack of understanding of the technology or black box decision making, it's very hard for those dis that technology to be adopted by the broader public. Just look at our inability to connect well with the public on the use of NHS data and how that could transform medical decision making. Well, one way that we might approach some of this problem is through legislation and regulation. Legislation and regulation certainly can help us build trust in the way that we adopt these technologies. And while legislation is inevitably slow to catch up, the landscape is starting to change. GDPR. Well, those are four letters that I suspect most people are pretty sick of hearing about from earlier in the year. 
and there was a lot of noise about GDPR, particularly around AI and automated decision making. There were some commentators recommending that actually the GDPR was the legislation that was going to save this field, it was going to bring trust and transparency to everything that we're doing. There were other commentators who, who told us that this legislation would be the end of AI, it would make all automation illegal, we might as well pack up and go home. Well, despite all of that bad reporting, the fact is GDPR does not guarantee explainability. But the amazingly positive thing that GDPR has done is raise in the public consciousness the issue of transparency and data privacy. And that's important because while the legislation isn't there yet, the public demand for transparency in decision making is growing. And a huge part of the problem is that AI is really difficult to define, let alone regulate. So Stanford University's 100 year of AI study said that the study's panel's consensus is attempts to regulate AI in general would be misguided, since there's no clear definition of what AI is, it's no one thing, and that the risks and considerations are very different in different domains. Well, when you think about it, that's not all that surprising. It would be nonsense to try to regulate clinical decision making in the same way as we regulate Netflix movie recommendations. Nonetheless, Europe is leading the way in adoption for ethical AI and AI policy research. You just need to look at UK government's code of conduct for artificial intelligence and other data-driven technologies. Now that is still only in the very early stages, but it looks like it might be a great step forwards towards being able to legislate well around some of these decisions. But we can expect legislation to take a long time to evolve. It has taken a long time in other fields. It's only because we have decades of good case law that we're able to have legislation that provides us good motor liability uh, decision making, for example. In fact, even in automation, a field that we might consider as being very new, we have examples of legislation taking a long time to catch up with the reality. Here's an example. Between 1985 and 1987, a software failure in a Therac 25 radiation therapy machine resulted in six known accidents. Some of those were fatal. Now, the software that drove that machine, it was built by a company called Atomic Energy Canada, that was responsible for the failures in those incidents that caused those accidents. Now that was software that was an automation software. It was designed to take away the laborious and time-consuming setup and administration of these machines from the radiologists. Now that's something which we can certainly call automation. We might even decide is artificial intelligence. Now interestingly, the, the debate about where liability sits for those fatalities and those accidents, well that's still hotly debated today. Some hospitals put in their own safety procedures and in those hospitals there were no accidents. So can we argue that the hospital was liable for, the, for those accidents and those fatalities? Atomic Energy Canada repeatedly told us that these were safe software, these were safe machines, despite knowing that their testing procedures were not up to scratch. So they have some liability. We could even argue that the software engineer themselves had a duty of care to their patients when writing the software. So are the software engineers liable? It's taken a long time for legislation to catch up with the nuance of cases such as these. So there's an argument that could be made that actually it's down to the market, not to legislation, to build transparency and to fix some of these problems. That actually it's businesses who are building these technologies and businesses that are implementing these technologies, given the market demand and the public demand for transparency, who should be responsible for building transparent, safe artificial intelligence. So how do we achieve that? What's next? Well, one way is to build artificial intelligence systems that are human down as opposed to just data up. So we combine people's expertise with data. AI systems that have a grounding in human logic rather than predominantly large data sets allow you to build things that are explainable that are manageable and will stand up to the rigours of regulation. And this is what we do at Rainbird. At Rainbird, we start with people. 
we work with our clients' subject matter experts to really understand what it is that they know about their world, how they're making their decisions, and map that into a body of knowledge which we can use to automate that decision making. We've seen that decisions reached through AI systems need to be understandable by the layperson, because understanding brings trust. And it's by starting with human decision making that we're able to build systems that are explainable, that bring a full audit trail that anybody can see how those decisions are made. I'll give you a couple of examples of how we're doing this in the real world. We're working with a company called Fluid Motion. Now, Fluid Motion uh, provide hydrotherapy and physiotherapy for people with a range of different uh, illnesses, musculoskeletal disease, for example. Now they program these systems and these uh, sets of therapy for their uh, patients by taking the very best physiotherapists in this field. Unfortunately though, expert physiotherapy is hard to come by and it's a very difficult business to scale to reach the demand for these programmed therapy sessions. So they turned to us. We were able to sit down with their subject matter experts and build software that encapsulated everything that they know about how to serve their patients well. And now they have systems where the patients can come, there are literally iPads by the side of a swimming pool, the patients can come and discuss their program of physiotherapy with a Rainbird powered system. And Rainbird will say, we think you should do this exercise, this exercise and this exercise, but crucially, this is why. And so the patient is able to understand the reasons behind why those decisions are being made so they can have better confidence and better trust that the right system is being put in place for them. Another area where there is a growing need for this kind of transparency in decision making is in law. law being able, in law, being able to understand the reasons behind these decisions is absolutely crucial. And we've been working with Taylor Wessing, law firm, for quite some time now. Now they've taken Rainbird and they've used it to build a whole bunch of different tools that can advise their clients and work internally. For example, one of the tools that they built took their expertise on how uh, some of their clients might be caught by changes to the Modern Slavery Act. They've deployed that as a tool that allows their clients and prospective clients to come and talk to, to understand where they might be caught by the changes to this legislation. It can do that without needing a human subject matter expert to provide that advice. But crucially, at the end of the consultation, it provides a plain English rationale for the, the advice that it's given. And that's really, really crucial because that means that those clients can read this, they can understand it, and then they can come to Taylor Wessing with a clear picture of what it is that they need. And Taylor Wessing are able to provide good accurate, trustworthy advice to their clients in an automated manner. Without a tool like Rainbird, they wouldn't have been able to do that. The real interesting takeaway from this, I think, is that the industries that are being most heavily impacted by this change in automation, this sweep of this new technology, are industries such as healthcare, finance, law. Industries that are already heavily regulated. And so transparency in this decision-making is already a requirement. But regardless of how legislation and regulation changes over the next few years, there is growing public demand for transparency in decision making. So it is becoming increasingly crucial that we are able to provide justification for the automated decisions that we're making. Don't risk losing the human element in your decision making, because if you do, you risk building technology that your end users can't trust and won't be adopted. Thank you.